Austria cannot choose his enemy. As Britain has gradually abandoned her imperial role, time and again the Argyles have found themselves confronting men fighting for political independence. In India, South Africa, Ireland, Palestine, Cyprus, and finally in Aden. Their story is entwined with the rise and fall of an empire. You can trace it through the ornaments of the officer's mess. In this splendid silver Zulu, depicted as a noble warrior and worthy opponent. Right down to a cartoon by Jack. Catching the mood of Aiden. McTavish, put the new Minister of Culture down. which has been built up because we have all been through hard times and tough times and danger together. There's no question of there being an elite who is exempt from the ordinary, the sweat and the rigors of the day and the unpleasantness whenever the unpleasantness has arrived. This is something which binds you together very strongly. One has one's own set of values to a large extent. And we don't regret one single thing we've done. And although these men may die, I want not to reason why you see them. In this fight there is no glory, and death comes by the rule. The lives of Highland soldiers in the hands of English crew. Seven hundred Glengarry's men heard the cry come ringing down the glen. Any mind of sand, pack your rifle in your hand. The Argyles are moving again. By the end of the month, the Argyles will be in Berlin. They could be just in time for the newest crisis in Europe's most sensitive city. If there are no changes of heart, that will be the last time they will ever leave these shores. At Stirling Castle, on St. Andrew's Day, 1970, as their commanding officer puts it, we shall just take a smart turn to the right and fall out. No one will be out of a job. A few, especially among the officers, will leave the army with feelings of bitterness at the way their regiment has been treated. The rest will disperse to other units. The 
Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders will be gone. 